the more I play with Vazaraga in the endgame, the more I see how powerful this character is. Being able to easily do over 2 million damage with a single hit, while at the same time being able to maintain his undying buff, which as the name implies makes it so that he can simply not die. There's even a really cool playstyle that you can do with Vazaraga, where you only use a single button to destroy bosses and shred through their HP like it's nobody's business. I really do feel like Vazarag is one of those cases where he just breaks the game. And so in today's video I will be sharing with you a couple of tricks that I have learned that have truly turned Vazaraga into an unkillable damage machine as well as my perfected build for him. With that being said, my name is Dark Hero, hope you are all having a good day and let's get started. So Vazraga's basic gameplay loop is all about using his skills to then follow up with a powerful charged attack that is going to deal tons of damage, like so. And as you do this, you'll be filling up your gauge, which will give you stout heart, defense up, and attack buff whenever you fill up that gauge. And so with this, you can straight up be in boss's faces, and thanks to your immortal pain as well, making it so that you can never go down below 1 HP, and also granting you debuff immunity, so you never get frozen, slowed, or anything like that, you can simply keep on dealing as much damage as possible, non-stop doing your charged attacks, and just destroying any boss that comes your way. However, there are a couple of very important things that you can do with Vazaraga to maximize his damage output. Now a very cool trick that I didn't know when I made my first Vazaraga guide that will actually help you improve your Vazaraga build potential is that if your battalion sphere which is this gap closer is on cooldown you can actually do a light attack and follow it up with a charged heavy to have a gap closer which you then can follow up with a combo finisher like so and the trick here is that if you dodge after finishing that combo finisher you can then keep on charging these infinitely and these are of course gap closers that allow you to quickly close the gap between Yuyan and the enemy. They cover a lot of range as you can see and they also deal tons of damage. Now that charged attack is not going to deal as much damage as this one right here, but it's still a very powerful tool that you can take advantage and is going to help level up your Vazaraga gameplay. Now there are a couple other cancels that you can do with Vazaraga, which are what turns him into such a powerful monster. Where by doing a couple of basic attacks and then going into your charged heavy attack, you are able to perform this powerful strike that can then combo into another combo finisher, like so. This deals a ton of damage and there's a cancel to make it come out faster. So what you want to do is basically do one of these basic attacks and just before you finish it, you want to dodge out of the way to cancel it and immediately after you want to do a second basic attack and also cancel it. So I'm going to be doing it faster here so you can see it. It's going to basically look like this. You chain those two together and then you follow up with your charged attack and you are essentially skipping those two steps being able to reach that big powerful charged attack much quicker. And this is actually the best DPS parse for Vazaraga with a specific build, which I will be showing in a moment, but there are some caveats to that build, so let's go over what I believe to be the optimal build first. As I said before, the idea with Vazaraga is using a skill and following it up with a heavy charged attack. However, a very cool thing that you can do with Vazaraga is use one of these skills, like so, cancel it by dodging, and then going into your big combo finisher. And as you saw, I still have the cooldown for the Great Scythe Grinoth, which is the one that I used to cancel. And so you can infinitely keep on doing this, using the Great Scythe, cancelling it into the charged combo finisher. And then doing the same thing over and over again. And because you simply deal more damage with the combo finishers, this is going to be a much more powerful option. Additionally, you can actually parry incoming damage with Vazaraga if you perform this at the right time. However, in my opinion, you don't actually need to worry about that because of the Immortal Pains and Dying Buff, which makes it so that you can never go below 1 HP. Now, you might be asking, don't you have to worry about the long cooldown of this skill? And frankly, the answer to that is quite simple. I'm going to use Immortal Pain to demonstrate the skill cooldown coming up. And as I'm doing this combo cancel with the Great Scythe into the combo finisher, you'll see that the skill cooldown for the Immortal Pain skill is replenishing very, very quickly. So much so that by the time Immortal, Plain, Immortal Pain is finished, I will, I will be able to use it right away. 
And just like that, after 4 charged attacks, I was able to get Immortal Pain back, just in time before the buff ran out. And there is a very simple explanation as to how I was able to achieve this, and this is when we talk about my specific gear, what I am calling the perfected build for Vazraga. And of course, as usual, the Terminus weapon is going to be the best option, as it provides you with a ton of stats, you get 5 free levels of damage cap, Sigil Booster to help all of your Sigils, and Catastrophe which is going to raise your attack by 50% and raise your damage cap by 100%. However, the most important thing here for the build and the reason why I was able to get Immortal Pain back up so quickly is this Sigil right here. Ebony's Poise, which is one of Vazaraga's signature sigil, this will shorten Vazaraga's skill cooldowns whenever he lands a charged attack, going up to an 8% skill cooldown whenever you use a fully charged attack. That may not sound like much, however the very cool thing here is that it actually stacks with supplementary damage which causes me to trigger an extra instance of damage whenever I hit an enemy, and those extra hits are going to contribute to a shorter skill cooldown every single time. Additionally, having skill cooldown maxed out, as well as having some cascade is going to help along the way, and so the build that I am running that is able to hit damage cap and deal tons of damage, and have them dying up every single time, includes a couple of tyranny sigils both with quick cooldown, 4 different damage cap sigils, one of these with quick cooldown, another one with cascade, this one comes with Garrison, which is going to boost my defense by 36% based on how low my max health is, and this other damage cap comes with Guts, which is quite simply going to allow me to survive a hit that would kill me with only 1 HP remaining, and these two are used as a little bit of insurance for if some reason I am not able to get the Undying buff, and these two sigils are used mostly for insurance in those cases where maybe the boss runs away, and you cannot deal as much damage as you otherwise would, and so you cannot get the cooldown reduction from Ebony's Poise, so having these two is going to be very beneficial, and a good alternative would be to go with Potion Hoarder instead, which will give me a lot more potions to recover my health with, and since I will be dropping to 1 HP as soon as my Immortal buff runs out, having the ability to quickly restore my health or just having more blue potions to be able to fill up the link gauge faster can also be quite beneficial. And of course I am running a war elemental sigil which is going to make it so that all of my attacks count as if they were of a superior element which means that I will simply be dealing 20% more damage and this goes above the damage cap so it is by far one of the best ways to boost your damage. And this critical hit rate sigil I originally had it with enmity or stamina. I tried with both to see if there would be a difference but as it it turns out my damage output is actually the same, I still hit the damage cap even without enmity or stamina, and so I simply opted to go with Link Together, which is a more utility focused skill, as it's going to make it easier for me to fill up the Link Gauge, increase the damage of the Chain Burst and the SBA, it's just a very nice quality of life sigil, although sigils like Nimble Onslaught could also be potentially very good. As for my overmasteries, by far the thing you want the most is going to be normal attack damage cap up, and if possible getting critical hit rate up as well is going to be fantastic, but if you cannot get both, getting skill damage cap up as a secondary bonus is going to be very beneficial as well. As for my skills, I always go with Battalions of Fear, it's a very nice gap closer that deals plenty of damage and leads into the powerful charged attack. Great Scythe of Grinoth is the skill that we use for the cancel tech, so it is very much a required skill in my opinion, and Immortal Pain is what makes Vazaraga such a powerful character being able to stay in front of the boss no no matter what happens and you don't die, so again it is a mandatory skill in my opinion. And this one, I do believe that it is a bit of a filler slot, I don't think any of these other skills are mandatory. Damnation could be a very good tool to be able to boost your damage, but since I already hit the damage cap without this, there is no need to run this, and so I often go with either Umbral Eclipse to slow the enemies, which just means I'll have more windows to deal more damage, and because of the Ebony Sigil, I will be able to maintain a very big slow uptime, so being able to nearly permanently slow the enemy is going to have great benefits. And Nether Wrath is a very powerful tool if you're playing in multiplayer, where you can hold this skill and all of your allies will take no damage, they will not be affected by any status effects, so you combine this with Immortal Pain, and you're able to stay within the area of anything that would one-shot you, and nobody would take damage, they could simply focus on dealing damage. So if you are trying to speedrun with a group, this is essential in my opinion. What you are seeing right now is the absolutely insane damage output that you can get out of doing that 2 basic attack into combo finisher cancel that I showed you earlier, where you dodge twice and then do a couple of combo finishers. 
With this tech you are able to reach very easily upwards of 40 million damage and if you manage to successfully master the timing and do it as soon as you can, you are able to even reach within the 45 to 50 million range. That is absolutely crazy damage numbers and there is a very simple reason that explains why we are able to hit those numbers. And that is these two sigils right here, less is more. By using these you are essentially trading not being able to use any of your skills but at the same time you are able to raise your attack by 120%. This will allow you to deal much more damage than you would have been able to before but of course the downside is that you will no longer have access to all of these powerful skills that Vazaraga has. But because Vazaraga is such a powerful character that has access to stout heart you are actually still able to fill up some of these slots with more utility focused skills and as you can see I'm not even running my signature sigil because there is no need for it. I am not going to be reducing any skill cooldown since I have no skill active and so with this build I opt to go with more utility focused skills like I have a couple of garrisons here, I have potion hoarder and nimble onslaught as well on top of improved guard and guts as well. Nimble onslaught is going to extend my invincibility after a perfect dodge by 2 seconds at level 16 and will also boost my SBA gauge. It's just a nice skill to have although it's not mandatory Potion Hoarder, Garrison and Guts we already talked about why I like them so much and Improved Guard is just there in case I need to block some mechanics because I will no longer have the Undying buff. Being able to block more things from those mechanics will make things a lot easier for me. Now for this slot there are many things that you could go with. I could go for example with this one that comes with Link Together and Garrison or I could go with another critical hit rate sigils that also comes with Drain as I will need to regen my health to not get one shot with this build. But with these two builds you are able to absolutely destroy anything the game throws at you and so do let me know which playstyle you prefer. I personally prefer to go with the first one since I don't enjoy not using my skills on my character and it also feels like you're breaking the game by doing the combo cancels with the second build but even so you're still able to reach crazy damage numbers very easily dealing 2 million damage with Vazaraga in the single hit. So if you try out this build let me know how you feel about it, is there anything that you would like to see changed and let me know how you guys feel about these videos where I go over characters that I had already covered but I try to perfect their builds and also add some extra tips that we didn't know about when the game first launched. With that being said, my name is Dark Hero, thank you all so much for watching and as always, happy hunting!